Okay, so we finally have the release of uh, OpenAI O3 Mini that is now officially available on ChatGPT and the API. Now, I think it's still rolling out because I don't have access to this model yet, but the announcement is already up on OpenAI's website as well as they uh, released their system card. So in this video, we're going to look at the announcement and uh, we'll look at some of the great things about the model and also some of the not so great things. So here's the announcement. We're releasing OpenAI uh, O3 Mini, the newest, the most cost-effective model in our reasoning series. And it's going to be available both in ChatGPT and API. And just like the other reasoning models, it uh, is supposed to have pretty exceptional capabilities when it comes to STEM, particularly science, math, and coding. And these are the fields for which you should be using reasoning models. For writing, reasoning models are not probably a good option. Now, it's going to come in three different flavors. It's going to be small, medium, and high. Now, all of them are going to support function calling structured outputs and developer messages. So this is pretty great, especially if you're uh, going to be building agentic workflows. For agentic workflows, you want the model to have the ability uh, to do function calling and generate structured outputs. And this is also going to be uh, supporting streaming. So also a really good feature for developers, especially you don't want your users to be waiting for the whole response to be shown all at once. Now, as I said, there are three different options, low, medium, and high. And the goal is to optimize for different use cases. High is the most intelligent out of the three, but it's also the slowest. So you can pick and choose which one to use for your specific application. Now, unlike the O1 series, O3 Mini at the moment does not support vision capabilities. And they are rolling this out in Chat Completions API, Assistant API, and Batch API starting today for developers. So if you have previously created OpenAI Assistance through the Assistance API, that should work with O3 Mini as well. And it's going to be available to Plus, Team, and Pro users. Even the free users also get some quota. And now for the Plus and Team users, they have tripled the rate limit. So instead of 50 messages per day with O1 Mini, now you can get up to 150 messages per day with O3 Mini. So this is pretty great, right? Because it's actually make it a little bit usable. The previous quota, I would say, were, was pretty bad because you couldn't really do anything with O1 or O1 Mini if you were a Plus user. But with this, I think it is a decent rate limit. Although still other providers like DeepSeek are, are providing unlimited messages for free users. Now, a search is going to be available from day one. So you can do search with O3 Mini to augment the results, which is pretty nice. And as I said, free uh, plan users can also try um, O3 Mini by selecting Reason in the Message Composer or uh, Regenerating Responses. Now they say, well, while O1 remains a broader general knowledge reasoning model. Uh, the O3 Mini provides a specialized alternative uh, for technical domains required, uh, requiring precision and speed. Now, you can pick between low, medium, and high. I, I'm not sure like if there are separate rate limits for these different models or different modes. That would be interesting to see. I'm talking about the plus users. Pro users will have unlimited access to both O3 Mini and O3 Mini High. Okay, now uh, let's look at some of the benchmarks. As pointed out in the beginning, reasoning models are great for STEM field or in fields where you, you objective reasoning can actually help, right? So that will mean coding, mathematics, computer science are going to be the fields that will benefit the most. Now let's look at the benchmarks. So on mathematics, the O3 mini high actually outperforms the previous O1, but if you were to compare uh, O1 mini with the uh, mini low is behind the previous generation. Now the medium and high are doing pretty good. Now for med for PhD level science science questions, again the O3 mini high is comparable to O1. Now here's uh, the results on code competition. Again O3 mini high uh, gets a substantial improvement in here. Even the O3 mini low is 
probably comparable to O1 O1, and it's well beyond O1 mini. Now the sweep benchmark is a very similar story again, but for some reason in some of the benchmarks they uh, are omitting O1 mini. So it would be interesting to actually add those uh, and see how they compare with the uh, new generation. All right, here's the benchmark on live coding. Now in here, they're comparing it with O1 high. I actually haven't seen O1 high before. So I'm not sure if this, this is the standard model or this is like extended reasoning from the O1 model. I don't think they ever mentioned O1 high. But as expected, O3 mini on high setting outperform even the O1 high again. Now, so here's the speed and performance comparison. And after this, we're going to look at the cases in which, or the task for which it's not probably a really great option based on their own results shown on the system card. So they say with an intelligence comparable to O1 3 mini, they should specifically say high, deliver faster performance and more improved efficiency. Beyond the STEM evaluation highlighted above, O3 mini demonstrates superior results in additional math and factuality evaluation with medium reasoning efforts. So A-B testing O3 mini delivered a response is 25 times or 25% uh, faster than O1 mini with an average response time of 7.7 seconds compared to 10.1 seconds, right? So here is what you can see in terms of the response improvements compared to O1 mini. So this is going to be a pretty huge um, improvement in terms of speed and even efficiency when you're comparing it with the O1 mini, but the efficiency is kind of comparable to O1. Now in this blog post, they specifically highlighted agentic workflows that is going to be a great option for function calling structure outputs and developer messages. But if you look at the benchmark results that they are presenting in the system card for agentic tasks, it actually nags behind O1. So here's one of their data set for agentic tasks. And if you see the O3 mini pre and post lags behind O1 and O1 mini. Here's another benchmark, MLE Bench. This is developed by Kaggle to solve challenges involving design, building, and training machine learning models on GPUs. And this Evolve, we provide an agent with an environment, which is a G and GPU and data, and instruction set from Kaggle. And the agent is then given 24 hours to develop a solution, though we scale up to 100 hours in some experiments. Now, again, if you look at the results of this benchmark, uh, the O3 mini series is lagging behind the O1 series. Now, there's another data set, which is the internal um, uh, OpenAI uh, PRs. Now in here, again, you can see that it does much worse compared to the O1 series. And now for the MMLU, this was one of the data sets that was really famous, but they haven't highlighted it in their blog post. But this is multilingual test set. If, if you look at this, the O1 series are lagging behind uh, even GPT-4 for most of the languages. As I said, I haven't I got a chance to play with it because I haven't got the access yet. But in general, this seems to be a very interesting release. Although the performance boost on key areas such as agentic workflows is not as great as we were expecting. Anyways, really excited to see what the community thinks about it. So if you get a chance to play with the model, let us know in the comment section below. Anyways, thanks for watching and as always, see you in the next one.